Hey everyone, this is Jim from From Scratch Farmstead, and today I'm going to show you how to start seeds indoors without using a grow light. Right, so on our farmstead, we like to keep things really simple and really basic and low cost. We've had a successful vegetable garden for our family going the last few years, and to start seeds, we have just been starting them indoors um, without much fancy equipment or anything. We haven't invested in grow lights or heat pads or, or any of those things. And a few years ago, we tried just growing them indoors and just finding a south-facing window that, that brings in the most natural sunlight into our space and just setting up our, our seed trays with, with our seeds planted in front of those. And we've had a lot of success doing that. And so I'm going to walk you through our method, what we do with that. It's it's really basic, low cost, and easy way. And and just uh, yeah, if if you haven't started your own seeds before, if you're new to gardening, it's really simple, and you can start without a huge investment of equipment and different things. And so we just want to show you our really easy method of of how we do that. Um, and so just what you're going to need in terms of some equipment and things to get you going. Um, first thing is some seed trays. So we like to use these trays from Johnny's Seeds, which you can buy online. But you can really get these trays almost anywhere. Any garden center, any home improvement type store will have, will have these trays available. Um, for growing indoors, what we like to use is the tray with um, kind of a full tray that goes underneath it to enclose it. If, obviously, if you're growing outside, um, you don't need that, that bottom tray, but if you're growing inside and you've got wood floors and different things that you want to protect, it's just best to have a tray underneath it. Um, also, to go along with it then, we use these, these covers. And so it's a dome that you put over the top of it. And this is really just at the beginning as your seeds are germinating. It helps trap in heat and moisture. Um, so you really only leave those on for maybe the first week week and a half, something like that. Uh, once the seeds are, are germinated and your plants are getting taller, they'll eventually outgrow these. And so you take these off. You don't want to leave them on too long either because if they trap too much moisture for too long, then you can have things like mildew and mold starting to grow, which you want to avoid, obviously. So that's, um, that's the basic trays that we use. Um, for, for the actual um, seed starting mix, we just were outside and just mixed up our own seed starting mix, which we'll have a separate video for of how we did that. But you can also just go and buy a pre-made bag of seed starting mix. Keep it really simple. Um, you don't need anything fancy. Um, I, we always recommend organic if you want the best start for your seeds and the most healthy food that you can grow for your family. Um, but you can use anything. And so what, what we did was just took these trays outside. It's a lot easier to put the soil, uh, the seed starting mix in the trays outside. We actually do it in a wheelbarrow and just so you don't lose any, you don't waste any and put that in there and then kind of bring the trays in after that. Otherwise you end up with a big mess all over your room. Uh, just have a basic watering can uh, for watering and then also, I like to use a spray bottle. Um, some plants are a little more delicate and, you, and sometimes you just want to keep things moist but not too wet. And so that's where the spray bottle really comes in handy. Also, I'll just mention that we mix in some apple cider vinegar into the water and that helps both with germination and with growth. We learned that from a farmer friend. He told us to mix in just a couple, maybe yeah, a couple, two or so, tablespoons of apple cider vinegar into your water for, um, for your spray bottle, and that helps quite a bit. Uh, another tool I really like, this is like my favorite tool on the farm. I don't know exactly what it's called, this metal poker thing. I think it might be called a dibble. That's what I call it. Um, but I use this for actually planting my seeds. And so you just use this uh, to kind of keep your hands um, clean during the process. You use this to create your little hole. Um, for putting your seeds into in these little in the cells that are in the trays um, And this is also really helpful in the garden for things like weeding or pulling up root vegetables It helps you break up some soil. So get yourself a dibble um, And I didn't mention this earlier but with the seed trays. These are all um, 72 cell seed trays you could get them for different sizes of cells 72 is kind of the most universal one 
that's what we get. This one here that we're going to plant today also is a just a half tray that we picked up somewhere along the way. Um, and then obviously you're going to want seeds. And so we have all our seed packets ready to go. Um, we use Seed Savers Exchange. There's lots of different places. There's Johnny's and High Mowing and um, Baker Creek are some really good organic seed options. Um, but there's some, there's your seeds. Um, so I think that's all the equipment, everything you need. So just to walk you through the steps of, of what we do, like I mentioned, we go and we take these outside, we get the, the seed stirring mix in the trays to start. Um, you'll want to make sure that there's some moisture in there already. So I actually went through and already watered these a little bit to start, got them wet. Um, so then your, your trays are ready to go for planting. Um, you're just going to, so one, one really important step is to have a plan ahead of time and to label what you are doing. And so we've got a piece of paper here with our trays all laid out of what's going to go in each row. And so whatever method, you could do tray one, two, three, four, and then, um, you know, front to back, have your rows labeled out. You just want to have some sort of plan and some sort of record. Otherwise, if you're looking back on this, um, you know, a month from now wondering what you planted where, you're never going to be able to figure out. And we've been there before. So you want to have, definitely have a plan for that in place ahead of time and, and a record of that. Um, and then you're just going to go with your, your little poker here, your dibble, um, put in um, one or two seeds into each cell and, um, and then cover them back up on your seed packet. It's going to have the information of how to plant each seed. A lot of them are about a quarter inch deep, so you don't want to go too deep with it, definitely. Um, and then just cover them back up lightly with soil um, after you're done. Make sure everything's really moist, so you might want to go back through and, and just water everything again. Put your cover, your dome, back on top of the, the seed tray and just let it sit. And then you are going to want to check back on these daily, uh, maybe even multiple times, a couple times throughout the day. Check how much, how moist the, the soil is. If they're getting dry, go back, um, take your spray bottle, spray them down really good. Make sure that the, the soil is staying, staying moist um, and that you, you're, you're not letting anything dry out along the way. And each type of plant is going to germinate at a different rate, so those are going to pop up over time. One other important step in, in this process is something that, that is called hardening off. And so this is kind of towards the end of after your, your seedlings have germinated and grown for a few weeks before about a seven, a week, seven to 10 days before you transplant them outside, you wanna put, uh, take them through this process called hardening off, which is essentially getting them used to being outdoors and in the elements. And so, um, yeah, seven to 10 days before you do that, you wanna take your trays and actually bring them outside and find a nice um, sunny spot for them to be in. Um, the first day you do it, you only want to be, have them out there for about an hour and then you kind of step up incrementally from there each day um, and then that's going to get them used to the wind and other elements of being outside and it will just make the, the transplanting process outside go much smoother for you. All right, so just to, to reiterate and go back a few steps, the, really the most important part of this whole process is finding the best south-facing window in your home. If you don't have a south facing, good south-facing window in your home, this may not work for you, but um, if you have a, a good south-facing window that you could set up your seed trays in front of that brings in a lot of natural light, um, you're, you're going to raise some good plants for your garden. I will note, they may not be the most robust seedlings that you've ever seen before. If you are if you've gotten seedlings from a local farmer that grows in a greenhouse or has grow lights or something like that, they may be more robust than the ones that you can grow just with natural light. But it's such a great starting point. We have done this the last few years for our family and we've raised really successful gardens. Our seedlings have always transferred 
well outside, taken root, grown, and turned into really nice, big, beautiful plants. It's really basic to get going. You don't need to invest in a ton of equipment. Get a couple, get even just one tray to start. Get some seeds and some seed starting mix and, and get going. It's, it's really simple. Um, and you can, you can do this easily with, with your own family and grow a ton of really awesome, healthy, nourishing food for your family. One of the other great things about starting seeds indoors is that you can get the whole family involved. If you have kids, it's a great thing for them to be a part of. So my daughter and I are gonna um, go ahead and start planting our seeds here in a minute. Um, but we hope you've enjoyed this, uh, this video about starting seeds indoors in a really low cost, basic way. If you do have any questions about it, feel free to drop it in the comments below. We'd love to um, help you troubleshoot or answer, answer any other questions that you have. And if you want um, more content on homestead how-tos and uh, nourishing recipes and tips for natural living, you can subscribe to our channel. So thanks so much for stopping by the farmstead today and we'll see you next time.